guys, so today I'm going to go through uh, some of the gear that I had when I completed um, my through hike. Um, so I don't have my clothing here because the clothing is like in my closet somewhere. Um, I ended up with two short sleeve shirts, two pairs of shorts. Uh, I always just carried one pair of socks because when you're out there and your socks are wet, like, who really cares about putting on dry socks? Just put on wet socks again. Um, and I carried two sports bras and three pairs of underwear. So that's the clothing that I carried with me. If I had to do it over, I probably would eliminate um, maybe one pair of the shorts because I really didn't at the end of the hike, I really didn't end up like changing out of my hiking clothes and sleeping in something different. Um, but I did, like if it was wet or if I was sweaty, it was always nice to be able to take off your shirt and put on another shirt. Um, but that, that was how I ended the hike. Um, majority of the time I had a tank top and a short sleeve shirt. But once it started getting cold, I switched to uh, another short sleeve shirt and got rid of the tank top. Um, okay, so we'll start with my pack. I had the Osprey Aerial 65 AG uh, without the brain. Um, I was not a huge fan of my pack. Um, I think like for our practice hikes, um, for our pre-hikes before the through hike, it was fine because it does carry weight well. And like, you know, once, once you can get the, um, the, what is this called? Hip, Hip belt, belt, uh, comfortable. Like once it starts like molding to your body, it becomes very comfortable. So it's a very comfortable pack and, and like I said, carries weight really well. But what I don't like about it is the weight. I still have the thing from the flight. Um, it weighs like four something pounds, which is ridiculous. So like at the end of the hike, you know, once we got to New Hampshire, we were going into the whites, we were trying to shed as much weight as possible. So we got rid of our Crocs, we got rid of our sleeping bag liner, we got rid of like anything extra that we didn't need. And I feel like we wouldn't have had to have gotten rid of those luxury items if our packs weren't as heavy as they were. So if I was to do the through hike again, which I'm not, um, I would <laughs> I would do, I would look into uh, a lightweight pack, maybe, I don't know, uh, what, what's the brand that everybody loves? Hyperlite. Yeah, Hyperlite. I would definitely look at a Hyperlite bag. Or maybe even like a, um, an Osprey, like the one that's lighter. Um, and maybe just bring like a fanny pack type thing because a fanny pack would help, would be useful for, I think, a woman going into town and stuff because then you can just put all your stuff in a fanny pack instead of like carrying it around in your hand. And then you don't know how many times I've lost my, my uh, driver's license and my wallet to go through this through hike, You're like fine. thinking that I left it somewhere and I actually did leave it in somebody's car. But anyways, so that's what I would do. I would do either Hyperlite or an Osprey pack that was more lightweight and I would do try like a fanny pack or something where I could put snacks and whatever I needed accessible to me. There you go. Um, this is my Z seat. Uh, I liked it for many different reasons. Obviously to sit on it was comfortable, um, but also like if I needed to set like wet socks outside or whatever i could put it on this and not have them get dirty because they wouldn't be in the dirt i don't know it's just like you try to keep as much your stuff as clean as possible i'm just weird like that maybe I, that's just me uh, but yeah i love it. it didn't weigh anything really i mean it weighs something but it's really nothing all right here's my pack cover it's just your basic, we needed a smaller one. It's just your basic uh, Osprey pack cover. Yeah, we got the size large, I think. We could have gotten away with a medium for sure. Uh, 
this is my bug net. I think this is a sea to sun oh. bug net. It definitely came in handy for sure. I wore it uh, in Connecticut, Massachusetts. I think I even you started wore it in, wearing in New York. Yeah, so New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and a little bit of Vermont. I was wearing this bug net. Um, we weren't sure how bad the bugs were going to be in Maine, so I mean, I just kept the bug net just in case. Um, my food bag was a Z-Pax food bag. Everybody had one of these. Uh, literally, everyone had one of these. Either green or blue. That's what they had. Mm -hmm. um, Alright, so... Yeah, I'd put a piece of tape or something on yours. Just to so just people wouldn't act, don't accidentally grab yours out of a food box. Right. <clears throat> um, and vice versa. Because you can't like, you can't like write anything. I wrote with a Sharpie on mine, but it wore off. Yeah, so I would definitely like try to um, put something on it so that you know it's yours. Like maybe even like a, I don't know. Colored string or, or something. something. Yeah. Um, here are my trekking poles. They're not put together. But these were the Lucky Cork Flight trekking poles. Um, I only I had to get one of my tips replaced once. I think I did that in Vermont. Um, I really like these trekking poles. Uh, I couldn't have done the trail without trekking poles. I don't know how how people uh, like how people do that. We did see a couple people that didn't have trekking poles, and I don't know how these saved my life multiple multiple times all right here's my umbrella ella uh this is from gossamer gear we get so many questions about our umbrellas and we've done a video about how they attach to our packs how john like you know did this thing where it kind of goes through here and then it goes through here and then sits like here and then it opens and that's that's how it attached to our packs were these little bungee things that he added on to our packs if i was going to do the uh hike again i would definitely get an umbrella um when you're cold it's nice to have something over your head that helps you not get cold and then you can also wear less clothing so you're not necessarily sweating um and then when you're when it's really hot outside and you're you know, it's raining and you have your umbrella. It's just kind of nice to just, who cares if like your legs get wet, but like just to keep your head and your face from getting wet, it's just a really good feeling. So like you're not getting to camp like completely soaked. Um, so I would definitely bring my umbrella. Uh, clothing, or other clothing. Um, so I carried a hat to the end would not have been able to do the hike without a hat. Sorry guys, I know you hated the hat, but the bugs were relentless and they would like come, like you'd yeah. be hiking and they'd like come right in front of your eyes and then like dive bomb into your eyes and they like, they buzz around and buzz around. So like the hat, especially if I kept it low, it would prevent the bugs from being able to get near my eyes. So this was <clears throat> like, Mentally, I needed a hat. <laughs> All right. My rain pants were outdoor research. Um, I think I got these on sale at REI. But what I liked about them is they zip up from, you know, the top to the bottom. So if I needed to take them off, I could just slip them off and not have to deal with like getting the inside of my rain pants really dirty, even though they still did. But I think like if I didn't have this whole thing right here, it would kind of, you know, <clears throat> make everything a little bit more dirtier. And it also gives you a little bit of airflow. So if it's, uh, if you start getting warm and you're wearing your rain pants, just open it up a little bit and you get some airflow through. So I really like these outdoor research green pants. Oh, so here, here's actually one of the t-shirts that I ended the trail with. I don't even know. It's, it still smells good because I did do laundry. Um, so I had two 
uh, t-shirts like this. These were Lululemon. They wore really well. Like, I don't have any holes in them. Um, they're just, they're like the wicking material and they're also microbacterial, whatever, so that like the stinky smell doesn't come. But that, I mean, come on, really. I'm out there and I haven't showered for days. So yeah, of course it's stuck. But the, I really like those. Uh, my rain jacket was an Arcteryx. Which kind was it? I don't even remember, honestly. I think it was like uh, Arcteryx. Beta SL, I think. Yeah, Beta SL. It's not like the ultra, uh, ultra light rain jacket, but it is one of the lightest ones that they make. Um, and I really liked my rain jacket. I wore it a lot when it wasn't raining because I would get cold very easily. And like if we would stop and take a break, you know, you've been sweating and you get a little chilled. So I would put my rain jacket on and it's got the pit zips all the way down, which you definitely need something like that because if you're wearing this and you're sweating and you're hiking, you want to get some ventilation. But yeah, does this stink? I think we washed this one too. <clears throat> show you my panties but I wear panties um, I carry two bandanas with me this bandana was my sweat bandana and like wipe my face if I've been eating <laughs> bandana I carried it like on my pack like this you've probably seen it a million times uh, and this one is my pee rag um, I don't know how women handle peeing out there. I know a lot of women did carry pee rags, um, but this was just something that was attached to the back of my pack. Whenever I had to go pee, just untie it, go pee, and done. And apparently the sun, like, I don't know, kills the stuff that's on it. That's what, I, that's what I've been told. Uh, we picked up these gloves, like, the last, the day before we summited Katahdin because it was starting to get really cold in the morning and it was hard to get up when your hands are cold and like move around and get everything put together. So we bought these little gloves. They were $1.50. Uh, we got them at the AWOL bridge like store or whatever. Um, so this isn't necessarily like part did of- Did you say the AWOL? AWOL, I did. AWOL. Um, this isn't necessarily like a part of my gear per se, but this is something that I ended up on the last day carrying. And I wore them for like the first part of the hike up Katahdin. That's inaccurate. She wore her on the way down too. Don't let her lie to you. I did? Maybe. These are my gaiters, Dirty Girl gaiters. Uh, I really liked them. I have nothing bad to say about them. They're very cheap. I would get them. Uh, this is my ankle brace. I rolled my ankle, I don't even know how many times on the trail. So I wore this ankle brace. Where are you going? I'm gonna sit down, this is dragging out. Uh, th so now oh. you know how I feel when you talk. Oh, Lord. So this is, uh, I wore this like literally every day. Uh, Um, so to talk about the, my other clothing that I wore, so my shorts that I wore to hike in were Patagonia, uh, barely their baggy shorts or something like that. Um, and then my other pair of shorts were just some like basic Lululemon shorts, really didn't matter, but they were like kind of an extra pair of shorts <laughs> in case I needed something to hike in, whatever. My socks were all... Uh, my socks were in Gingy socks. Um, I do not like to wear socks that don't have the toes. I have to have like the toe socks. So in Gingy, I didn't know this, but they 
I started out with in gingy liners and then I wore darn tough socks over it. Well then when we were in Front Royal, um, I needed new, I needed new something. I needed new liners or something because like my liners had kind of worn really thin. So I went to um, the outfitter in Front Royal and they had in gingy socks, not just the liners. So I bought the socks, I fell in love with them. Um, but the problem is, I guess when I'm going downhill, like all of my everything is like pushing through those, my socks, the tips of my socks. So they kind of worn, wore out pretty quickly. I had to replace those socks maybe twice, right? Mm -hmm. twice um, but I got the Njinji socks every single time that I had to replace them except for once I did get a pair of darn tough because they didn't have the Njinji socks and then once I found the Njinji socks I just did away with the darn tough again um, my sleeping pad was a Cita Summit I don't know what kind what kind was this one Cita Summit Comfort Light Insulated Comfort Light Insulated there you go See, I know. You can see it. Hold it up. Hold it up. You can see the insulation inside of it when you do that. When you hold it up you with the window. The what? The insulation behind it. You see the rectangular, the darker rectangular. That's the insulation. There you go, guys. There you go. So, I liked my sleeping pad a lot. It was very comfortable. Uh, I did get a hole in it. So, John had to Yeah, many it. holes in it. Remember those huge random holes that showed up out of nowhere? Oh, yeah. Looked like a dog got a hold of it. That was weird. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, yeah, these are kind of easy to, like, get holes in. But, I mean, I would imagine that any sleeping pad is. Mm. So, as long as you keep the... They're easy to patch, too, though. Yeah, as long the as you keep the, the um, repair kit with you, um, you can fix them. So this was, this was not something that I had with me when I summited Katahdin, but um, I washed it. So I'm just going to show it to you. It's the uh, Cedar Summit Cool Max um, sleeping bag liner. And this was probably one of my favorite pieces of gear and actually, actually like one of my luxury items, um, only because for a lot, a lot of times on our hike, it was really, really hot at night, but it wasn't hot enough to where you didn't want to sleep with something on you. So I would sleep in this and I would just feel like I had like a light blanket on top of me. It's also really nice because it prevents like, I don't know, feeling like getting sticky on your sleeping pad or getting sticky on your quilt or just like my, when it got really cold, my sleeping pad would be really cold. And like when I would move around, it was just chilly. So it would have been nice to have this, but since we were trying to save weight, I sent this home. My pillow, this is Tita Summit Arrows. I really, I mean, at first I really wasn't a big fan of the pillow. Um, I just couldn't really get it right how I wanted it. But after a while, let me tell you, mm -hmm. it really doesn't matter what you're sleeping on as long as you have a pillow and it's whatever, you're gonna go to sleep because you're really tired. But I'm really, uh, I'm glad that we had our pillows because I ended up really liking it. Um, we did have our puffies with us at the end. This is the Ar Arcteryx Celium LT hoodie. Cerium. Cerium. Whatever. Um, LT hoodie. Mine is not here. This is John's. My hoodie, like, on the seams on the back, all the feathers started, like, coming out of it. And it was really annoying, and it was... <laughs> It looked really crappy. I don't really care out on the trail, but I would care in normal life if I bought a really nice uh, down jacket and it looked like that. So I returned it to REI and they refunded me the money. REI is the best. Yeah, REI is the best. 
And then here is my quilt. I love my quilt. Mm -hmm. It is the best thing in the world. Um, it is... Oh my god, I can't I don't even know who makes it. How do I not know? Enlightened equipment. Enlightened equipment, duh. And um yeah, so it's really it was mine's a zero degree bag. John's was a ten degree ten. bag. Um but yeah, it's got like all these little clips so you can actually like clip yourself in to where you kind of feel like you are in a sleeping bag, or you can just lay it open which is pretty much how we did the whole time um but yeah i really loved my quilt and i'm glad that uh we went with quilts instead of sleeping yeah. bags it's very comforting knowing that like when we lay down we were going to be warm no matter yeah. how cold we were right these things are super super warm you do have to fluff them up you know yeah. get everything kind of moving around whatever but Otherwise, it was perfect. Um, people have been asking about how we got home from Katahdin. Hiked. So, huh? Hiked. Well, we hiked. We had to hike down the mountain because, you know, once you get up there, you got to get down. They don't have, like, a car up there or a train or an airplane. They need to install a zip line. So you have to take one of the uh, trails down to the bottom. We took the... Saddleback. Saddleback trail, which is um, supposed to be the easiest of the trails. It was not that easy. Mm -mm. Um, it was it was very steep and very rocky, just like everything else we had done. Uh, but it did kind of like get a little easier as it went on. Um, but yeah, so we took that trail down. By that time, we were we ended up in uh, the other campsite we weren't at Katahdin stream we were at Roaring Fork yeah and so. uh so from there we had to find a hitch to get to Millinocket and that was not very hard at all <laughs> because like the first car that um passed by us asked us if we needed a ride so they uh it was a father and son they were super super nice and they took us to Millinocket and then Millinocket, Katie, who you saw in our videos um, a few times, the angel that she is, she picked us up in Millinocket, drove us to Bangor, we stayed in a hotel that night, and then the next uh, next day we flew out of Bangor and came home to Charleston. So that's how that all happened. Um, I have a... I have a list of all the hostels and hotels that we stayed at on the trail. Um, and I was gonna do a video about it, but it's gonna be kind of boring, guys, because it's just gonna be me going over all the places that we stayed, and I don't know how interesting that is to you guys. So if it is something that you would be interested in knowing, or maybe it will help you plan for your through hike, um, just let me know and I can do a video um, about that. Um, John's a slacker and he doesn't want to go through his gear and tell you about well, his stuff. I've already gone over it when I was on trail. I showed you guys everything that I got rid of. So I feel like there isn't really anything to show. If you do want to see anything, comment on this video and let me know. And if you have any suggestions or just ask us, if you have any questions, put it on this video and we can go to this video when it's time for us to make a video answering questions. Yep. That's it. That's all I got. That's it. Uh, I'm going to put all my stuff away now. I, I didn't lose any weight on trail and I haven't lost or gained any weight since I got home. I'm exactly the same weight. Yeah, I haven't either. Um, yeah, I also wanted to talk to y'all about, a lot of people want to know, like, how, like, how our bodies are affected or, you know, whatever after the hike. Um, my feet, my ankles, and my knees are still pretty, I don't know, they're a little shaky. Um, my feet, definitely, when I wake up in the morning and step foot on the ground for the first time, it 
kind of takes a little bit getting used to. Mm -hmm. My ankles um, are the same way. And my knees, I can't exercise as like I used to be able to exercise. Um, so we haven't even, it's almost a one month, our one month anniversary of being off trail. And uh, like I thought that when I got off trail, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be able to go running. I'm gonna be able to, you know, do all the exercises that I used to do before. And I'm gonna be able to do it better because I'm stronger, I have more endurance. You know, my cardio is really good. And that just was not the case. Like I tried to um, work out and my body was just like, no, yeah. <laughs> like not having it. It didn't want to do anything. And now like I, I'm doing really lightweight stuff. Like I'm using really light weights. I'm not, you know, squatting really heavy, not deadlifting really heavy, not doing anything heavy because my body can literally not take it. Um, so it's going to take, I'm sure it's gonna take several months. I did go see the doctor and just, uh, you know, just for a physical after the hike. And she said that it does take, you know, it can take several months before your body is completely uh, healed, I guess, from everything that you put it through for, what, five months and 11 days. <laughs> so, yeah, it just takes time. But otherwise, we're doing well. We're adjusting to normal life just fine. Um, I do miss the trail from time to time um, just because I miss the freedom of it. It was like, I don't know, it was just fun. Like seeing new things every day, the people that you meet, um, like it was just, it was an awesome experience. And while we were out there, yeah, we were complaining a lot that we wanted to come home because we did want to come home. But that doesn't mean that I don't miss it. Um, but I'm glad that we're, we're done with it. Um, John, any, any issues coming back to real life? No, except I could hardly walk down the stairs in the mornings for the first two weeks. Yeah. It was extremely painful. I'd have to support some of my weight on the handrail. Mm -hmm. But it's just like a first thing in the morning thing. After that, after my feet warmed up, it was good. But Aside from that, nope, nothing. Nothing to complain about. I don't miss the trail any. I'm extremely happy to be home. I do want to go hiking sometime. Yeah. Wouldn't mind doing that. But um, I don't miss being on the trail as in, you know, out there permanently through hiking. Right. Uh, we were thinking <clears throat> about maybe going to Max Patch because we've been to Max Patch a few times before uh, we through hiked and we really, really like it. But we want to take our little puppy, Bella. Uh, see how well she does. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we don't want to do it when it's too hot. We also don't want to do it when it's too cold because that girl's high maintenance and she doesn't like that kind of stuff. She's so. downstairs sleeping right now. Yeah, she's downstairs just passed out. She's, she's an old little thing. So, But anyways, all right, so that's it. Um, if you have any questions about the gear, let us know. But otherwise, we'll see you next time.